What's up, everybody? My name is Matt White. Common question I get on social media when I post uh, work that I'm doing with horn sessions, either for myself or for other clients, is a lot of questions about microphones, preamps, how I'm setting up my session. So I thought I'd make a series of short videos outlining my signal chain so you can get sounds like this. With very minimal work after you get the recording done. Um, before we jump in, and today we're gonna talk mostly just about microphone choices. There's a couple things I wanna make clear that are really important to me when I make a decision about equipment and how I'm setting up my sessions. Number one, I wanna make sure that I get a really good signal with a good amount of gain that doesn't clip. Number two, I wanna really reduce any noise, um, any background noise, any hum from the signal, anything like that that might distract from the quality of the recording. Number three is I wanna make sure that I've done all the work on the front end so I have to do very little work on the post or after I do the recordings. I don't like having to do any EQ, any compression, any excessive fixing other than edits. And the reason for that is that number one, it saves me a lot of time. But number two, I wanna make sure that when I send something to a client that it is really dialed in and it's gonna sound great and I have to do a minimal amount of work with it to make it sound great. And it's also representative of how I wanna sound. So with that in mind, let's jump in. Okay, microphones. Probably the most important part at the beginning of your signal chain because it's what's capturing the sound. I really love this Barkley Infinity ribbon made by Michael Barkley in Ireland. Um, ribbon mics sound really great on horns. We're gonna get into that in a second. But what I love about this microphone is that it's very flat and feels representative of a trumpet sound. But at the same time, it's uh, it's got a little bit of airiness and transparency that reminds me of an RCA 44, which is one of my favorite mics, particularly when you get kind of close on the mic if you're doing solo work. So why do so many horn players love ribbons? Well, a lot of times you'll hear them describe them as warm. And while there's sometimes a some boost in the mid end, really what I, th I hear in ribbon microphones that gives you that warm sound is an absence of a boost in the high end. So if you check this out, this is an R121, really popular ribbon microphone for brass players. And you'll notice here this frequency response graph is very flat. A um, Little bit of a bump here, but for the most part is very even. Here's a Coles 4038, which people also love. And you'll see same thing here, very flat and even a bit of a roll off on the top end right here. Now compare that with um, very popular large condenser microphones like the Neumann U87 and you'll see this big bump here starting around 6K. And the same thing on an AKG 414, same thing. So these are incredible microphones, the U87 and the AKG, but you also have to think about what are they gonna be used for. Vocalists love these, they sound great on overheads, tenor saxophones, and even though there's no pitch information this high, all the overtones up there are the things that when you record on a trumpet or a trombone or something, make it sound bright or brittle. Now, that being said, sometimes I will kind of blend in a signal with a condenser. I really love this Aston Spirit large condenser microphone. And when I'm doing that, um, particularly I might do that on a track that has a lot of post-production on it and is, you know, have a lot of stuff where the horns might be competing with. In that case, I'll actually record a ribbon and a condenser in stereo with either about 70-30 towards the ribbon or 60-40 just to give it a little bit of that bite and top end so they don't feel, when I send it to the mixing engineer, they don't feel like they have to boost it or do anything weird with it to get it to, be, to speak in the track. Now, the other thing that's really important to remember about ribbon mics is that they have a figure eight polar pattern. So what does that mean? That means on the front end of the microphone where you're playing, you're getting sound, but it's also picking up sound on the back end. That sounds great if you're in a beautiful, large room uh, and you're recording horns in there and you maybe want some of that ambiance from the sound and there's not a lot of noise in there. But if you're recording in a home office, usually that back end isn't really giving you any benefit from the, the space sounding amazing. Plus, if anything, you're probably gonna be picking up some unwanted noise. So you might be picking up your HVAC system, you might be picking up computer hum, you might be picking up uh, just noise maybe in the room next door from where you're actually recording. So in that case, I really love this ISO Shield, also again by Aston, which is an incredible microphone company in the UK. What I like about this shield is you'll notice here that it not only controls the back end sound, but kind of encapsulates the top. What that does is allows me to really isolate the sound that I want and reduce any kind of noise in the background. Finally, I'll also boost the signal a little bit with this cloud lifter. What a cloud lifter does is it uses phantom power to go to this little box here and it gives you 25 decibels of clean gain. 
Sometimes with ribbon microphones, you do have to run the gain pretty high, which can give you some airiness or some hum in the sound or some low level noise. What's great about this is you get that extra gain on your preamp without any noise associated with it, and it protects the ribbon microphone. So all in all, we can use this to kind of build really good representative horn sounds. So I'm gonna show you this session here that I did, and I'm gonna kind of go one at a time, go ahead and turn off this reverb. But you'll notice here that there are no post EQ or anything. I'm just trying to get a really clean horn sound and I'm running a little bit of verb in parallel, which is muted right now. So let's check out this trumpet four track. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add them one at a time. Here's it with trumpet three. Trumpet two. Now we're gonna add trumpet one. And to me, that's a pretty representative trumpet sound, particularly for stack and horn stuff. Not overly dark, but not overly bright, um, but not harsh. Here's everything together with an added high note at the end and then also some flugels. And here we go, adding that verb back in. And again, this is just a parallel reverb, nothing else on this track. I hope this has been informative and helpful for you. Next time, I'm going to talk a little bit about preamps and how to set those up, some different choices on that end. Also, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to reach out and stay tuned. Thanks.